First up, player's card. Whatever you guys are ready. JT, I'm telling you, I had you on the back nine. No, you didn't. I pressed on 15 and got a birdie. <laughs> okay, but I had the prox almost the entire round. Okay, even if you had the prox the entire round, Steve was my ringer today. You no, know, don't worry about Steve, all right? We know we were the best two in the group, okay? All the points are distributed between us, all right? Let's focus on that. Okay, let's, let's get scoring right. All right, let's see. Um, did you carry the one on the prox? Yeah, I think so, but I... This math is just getting me. I'm not sure what to do. This is such a small card. <laughs> you know, it's all messy and everything. I'm sure there are other golfers having the same issue. Definitely. Yeah. I wish there was a better way to calculate this. Yeah, me too. Me too. You no, know, I heard about this app. What's it called? I heard it. <laughs> Hi, my name is JT Snyder, CFO of Players Card. My name is Brett Budzak, I am the CEO of the Players Card. My name is Kamal Gilani, I'm the COO of the Players Card. My name is Tamil Shah, and I'm the CMO of the Players Card. Hi, I'm Matt Kelsch, and I'm the CFO of the Players Card. My name is Kelly Lewis, and I'm the CFO of the Players Card. Now, what the Players Card does is provide you with an application to score games like Wolf and Six and Seven Point Scotch. Now, we have the framework of our app laid out for you here. Begin with, you'll log in, you'll get your own profile, and everything will be set to go. Then all you have to do is open the app up while you're out there on the course, input everyone's name as well as their handicap to make sure all the points are distributed evenly, and then you'll be able to specify what type of wolf game or six or seven point scotch game you would like to play. Then, what we do throughout the entire round is actually show you how many points you're up or down after every individual hole, not just the end of the front nine, back nine, or the entire game. Now, one of my personal favorite things about our app is we provide you with a link to Venmo at the end. So there's no bickering between whoever you're out there on the golf course with to settle the wage, oh, now, later. You can do it right then at the end of the round with Venmo. As far as the pricing of our app goes, we were deciding about this, and we actually talked to a lot of competitive golfers, and they said the best revenue stream for us would actually be to have a free app and then charge 99 cents per scorecard, as well as include $1.99 updates with new games and other little updates we would add in to make the app run more smoothly. Now, we arrived at our San and Tam by taking the total population in the United States and taking the percentage of golfers that there are in the United States. From there, we took the percentage of male golfers in the United States that fall into our tax bracket to get around 19 million golfers um, for our TAM and 208 million golf, 208,000 golfers for our SAM. For our SAM, we started off with the total population of Illinois and went from there. As far as our market share goes, we would like to get roughly 40,000 golfers within the first six months to a year, and that comes out with a market share percentage of about 4.6%. Now, it might seem like this would be a lot of golfers to pay the amount of money that we're asking, but I am a golfer myself, and I know we're willing to spend money on almost anything that will improve our golf game. For instance, last year, golfers combined worldwide actually spent $78 billion total. So, you know, you got a box of Pro V1s that runs about $60 to $80. You know, that's, this seems like nothing compared to something like that. So our competitors. The player's card has two main indirect competitors, Hole 19 and Swing by Swing. Hole 19 and Swing by Swing are apps that score basic games and they teach you how to golf. However, this is different from the player's card because we score more complicated games, such as the game of Wolf, and we have a portable robot. We went into our MVP stage thinking that flyers and websites would be the way to drive our customer segments to us. But what we realized is that it just wasn't conveying the message we were trying to send. What, what, what did work, on the other hand, was face-to-face -face contact and emailing. We realized that we have to go to our customer segment and we can't wait for them to come to us. When we actually made face-to-face -face contact with our customer segment and we uh, told them about our idea, they jumped at the idea to beta test our app. This is what led us to our 60 plus early adopters we currently have. Our beta app is actually in progress of being developed and is almost done. Throughout this entire process, we've learned a lot. We've generated a lot of interest in our idea, and we've actually found a possible investor for the future. We ran a focus group of 30 people and found out that 100% of them saw advertisements through Golf Digest and, and the Pro Shop. 
Now through this focus group, we do realize that we're not going to be able to get into Golfers Digest. We don't have enough flow of users yet. In year four and five, we do feel that that would be a prime target. For now, we really think the pro shop is the best way to get our to get our golfers and our customers segment. From all the people who we talk to, we know that the pro shop is where you make most of your impulse buys. You see an advertisement about the player's card, scan the GC code, and go right to our app to download it. Now with our five-year model, at UC we're progressing within from year one to year five. We start off with a six-month season. Now this is because in Illinois we can really only play for six months. This is, we're thinking we can get about 15,000 rounds of golf played, divided between those six months to 2,500 rounds per month. Now if you see the spike in year four and five, that's because we want to branch out to places like Texas, California, Arizona, and Florida, where their season's roughly 12 months. That's double what the season is here in Illinois. As well, there are five to ten times more golf courses, and in turn, more golfers there. This is going to lead to an increase in revenue. Now, for startup cost, the app development we found from different interviews with different app companies will cost roughly $25,000 to get off the ground. From there, web development will cost about $1,500, and marketing is going to cost about $1,000. For SGNA, we have app store, an app store cost yearly, legal, insurance, marketing, salaries, and IT. I direct you to the IT. We're a high IT company, so that's going to take about 25% of our revenue to do. We have no cost of goods sold because we're not a product. We're selling a service to you that you pay each time you use. Now, for a little bit more about us. We actually hit a bump in the road roughly at the end of the first semester because we decided that our original idea was really not going to cut it. So then the player's card was born. We really amped it up and we got very focused in our studies and were able to come up with what we are presenting to you today. And we think that has only made us stronger as a group but also as individuals and we've learned a lot about what we can accomplish if we all work together. Now as far as the ask, we are asking for $32,500 from you in exchange for 25.3% of our company. The majority of the money we're asking for comes from our startup costs along with a $5,000 liquidity cushion. Now for our exit strategies, at three years with the investors having a 25.3% ownership, we're going to be having a 44.1% internal rate of return, a money multiple of 2.8%. And this is all coming from pre-money valuation of around $96,000 and a post-money valuation of around $128,000. Now, as far as what we would like to do in the future, we have actually already spoken with another kind of mentor figure for us who has really helped us along the way in giving us all the formulas we need to really mass produce this app and get it out on the market and make sure it's usable and easily accessible to all the golfers out there. We would also like to expand much more to, to other states, like JT mentioned, that are playing golf almost year round, as well as maybe try and get to some other places in you know, just the ordinary golf communities. So with that being said, we all would like to thank you for being here today, as well as thank you for you know, being a large part in this class and contributing to the understanding of our business knowledge and really letting us explore business in a different way. Thank you, and now would be a great time for any questions. Trying to target people who would use it like 
15 to 20 or even more than that. Right. So that's really how we're going to get our revenue. Yes, yes. Yeah. Sorry. How do you get paid? We're getting paid through the 99 cents per round base. No, I mean, how are you actually going to collect the money? Um, through credit card on the yeah. app. So I, I'm assuming when you, you didn't use PayPal, you used the other brand. Then you went to Venmo. 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 Venmo, sorry. So when they put in the data and you go to Venmo, Venmo you're going to pay yourself. So yes. Yeah. 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 Not everybody will use Venmo no. because yeah. some people are really freaked out about it. It's a peer-to-peer -peer payment yeah. structure. So one thing you want to tell investors is what Venmo is. Yeah. Uh, and and so you, you're going to want to take a credit card for the gaming part. Yeah, Venmo yeah. kind of will be an option of whether it's Venmo will be the option at the end for any settling of disputes. Does all parties have to be have an account in Venmo in order to make the transactions? Yeah, I find that sort of a limiting aspect of this. Well, actually, because it's not. Uh, the more you expect your users to do things like sign up and order new accounts, the less yeah. likely you're going to get viewers for users. But let me make sure I understand one thing. One person in the foursome can use can have the app, the other three don't need it necessarily. They don't necessarily need it, but if you do want to keep track. Well one person can keep track, right? One person can keep track. If you want and so and in fact if you're all paying ninety-nine cents. The idea is that only one person would really be, why would we all be 99 cents left to a score? Yeah. We don't, when you play golf or you don't keep your own score card, one person yeah. can, right? A uh, couple questions. Um, number one is, you're a possible investor, you kind of threw that out. Who is that? What amount of money? What's interesting? As of right now, his name's Todd Bergeron. He is a family friend who had, was going down the road of possibly wanting to develop a wolf app specifically. Okay. And he had said that he would want to further down as we make progress with this, if it turns out to be something that sparks interest, that he would possibly want to come partner with us and invest. Indeed. Indeed. Monetary Indeed. values have not been discussed yet. Okay. Uh, two is I may disagree with you on the Golf Digest in that they're always looking for new ideas. I would recommend you give it to them for free. You know, okay. them, you know the reporters test it. They're more likely to write on it. You don't have to have a ton of credibility. If the product works, there's a chance they're always looking for new interesting and I'd also, like down the road, not initially, it's just so complicated, but you're building an app that is going to get a lot of eyeballs all the time. It's very sticky, which is perfect setup for an advertising model. So, you know, I, when you're building out your mobile app, think about where, you know, places that you could put banner ads or right. little ads or product placement, because if you do build up that big of a base, yeah. with, uh, golfers, with golfers, that's like a great target. Well, I think, yeah. I think about like that is because we, we have bounced around the advertisement idea, but yeah. we kind of had to rework our financial model. Right. And just for the simplicity of it, I agree. we yeah. left out I the think advertising. That was smart, okay. but I just, I think I see a phase too if you do get yeah. to that Absolutely. third year and before you break out into other markets, yeah. I think you can really start building in even more revenue. The other thing I would do is, the way to promote this might be uh, a, just a sticker that you guys create, the QR code that you can yeah. you know, quickly download it, and go to a pro shop and say, can I stick my sticker on your scorecards? Well, that's, yeah, that's what we were. Or print it on your scorecards. Mm -hmm. You know, printing might be bad because there are a thousand of them printed. Yeah. A little clip that they have the scorecard on and everything when you go out and get the golf cart. We were thinking of maybe just doing like a little exactly yeah. Do download your wolf app right. here. Exactly. exactly. The the beauty of this is when one person in the foursome has it, the other three will download it out of right. curiosity, right. and then they play golf with other people, right. and the other three will download it out of curiosity. Right. You have this viral right. kind of ability to. But it's only what? As no, it's got it's 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 scotch too. Six and seven points scotch for the production of that. You said you had 60 people testing this already? Talk to us. Well, just like not testing literally, okay. but because we've created just the wireframe pretty much of the app where okay. it's it's usable, but it's not complete. And based on, I mean, some we've gotten some people that have come in here just visiting that we've talked to about it and they've shown interest. I know a lot of 
my dad's, about 20 of my dad's friends actually, just a lot of people like that, I mean, they, they show interest. And then, uh, we actually, we stood outside Jewel, <coughs> the early stages of this, just beginning and kind of bouncing the idea off of people, and that's how we got a lot of the other Now that the season is different, yeah. where we should stand outside of uh, well, Jewel? Well, I'm actually a member at Winstone, okay, and so that's where. Because your target market is a different place. Exactly. So the game was invented, I think. <laughs> <laughs> what? Go ahead. Can, can you change? Can you change partners? What do you mean? So the six point sketch game. Can you change partners every yeah. game? Yeah. Well, no, that's, that's that's part of the whole that's little fine. detail stuff that we're still kind of working on in the app. But we have it customized where you can set your point value at the beginning and all that kind of you stuff. You have it full function. Right now, if you use on the computer interface, it does all that for you. So when you're playing wolf, it puts the wolf back at the end each round, and the next person is the wolf in. Um, and then with six and seven points, gosh, depending on if you want to switch every three rounds or every six rounds, you could specify. There's three holes for every six. Holes. Or six holes or three. And then, could you go to your the numbers page? That's not quite it. So you want X amount of dollars from us, and this is what you're going to do with the dollars. That, that. Yeah, that's what we're doing. That, that, that. So, twenty-five grand for the app, and you talked to someone specifically and said that's what this is going to cost. We actually talked to about four or five different developing companies, and that's we good that. yeah. Yeah. build a website. Uh, Fifteen hundred bucks. Okay, so someone here is doing that. Yeah, can't do it. legal. Uh, I see. Uh, there's uh, yeah, add some more money on your legal because it's going to cost you. Um, the um, and marketing, what are you doing for a thousand dollars a year in marketing? That was kind of where we were hoping to hire somebody who would be able to go to places like Florida and like California, try and spread the word down there. For a thousand dollars, they're going to wear a they golf ball. They can't get the. They can't. They might not get the air What more? Yeah, what we're. More what we, yeah, we want to do uh -huh. with that thousand dollars, just like with our startup costs, uh -huh. is if we can't get. Um, the codes out, two different golf courses. We don't necessarily need to have a person do it, but if one of us decides, hey, we want to go down on a family vacation, we're going to hit a bunch of golf courses, or just in the golf courses, especially in the first couple years in the golf courses in Illinois, we can drive around, call ahead, say, hey, would you want to let us do this, and deliver um, little slips so that people can because yeah, we obviously know. Yeah, or stickers on the or car. Stickers. You can do all this over telephone sales. You don't need to do business. Okay. Let's go back to the pricing, too. It, when uh, you're talking about using um, the PayPal, and that's, is there a reason why you don't want to use Visa? I mean, everyone has a music card in their pocket. Or it's not necessarily oh, and a PayPal. The so Venmo, and I guess this may have not been the case as well enough, that is for the end if you possibly want it from person to person interaction as a transaction. When you Pay for the app per time, it'll be through whatever you're using through the app store when you buy it. Oh, so you buy it. Carl, so some people may use some some people may use Wolf to actually gamble and they're gonna pay each other to settle their bets with Venmo. Right. That the, the way they're gonna get their ninety nine cents is through Visa, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 So set, so settling up is settling as well. Yeah. Exactly. What's what's the commitment of the team you two have been for us here in the presentation? What, what's the well, I think, I mean. I think we're all really committed to be, to continue this if it works out, because we've had a lot of ups and downs and we've all made it through. So we all wouldn't stick around if we didn't think it was going to work. Yeah. How did you work through some of those downs? Well, we actually, our, our mentor, Mike Berkowitz, mm -hmm. came in one time and that was, that was more between the team, a little fraction, and he, <laughs> He kind of just sat us down, talked us through it. We solved that. We came out, I think, all on a much better path than what we were before. And then, just in the beginning, I mean, we would we would go to the library, and we would. I know Hogs really helped us out a lot on figuring us out, giving us a set date where X needed to be accomplished, and then the next step and everything like that. So for, I would say, what about three, maybe four weeks, we would just kind of go in the back room a little bit, and while. I know Twinkle sat out here and took notes on the new stuff we were learning while we did. 
that, that's <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, in, in short, really, there have been, we've had yelling matches. Everybody in the class knows. <laughs> we, it's, it's one of the things we do. Problems come up with the financial model of everything, and we're always right. And then, Hogs comes down sometimes, or I'll come in, and really, between every time we're yelling, it's because we're passionate about the idea. We want, we think our way is the way to make it work, and a lot of times we all have to come to a medium. And if somebody thinks their way works, they go out and test it. If somebody thinks, if another person thinks it, we all kind of take as much information as possible to build the financial model. I, I know at the end, two weeks ago, we scrapped our entire financial model and built it back up because we realized, hey, this isn't working, but we can, we have enough information to make it work. So you, I know you guys were working with uh, AJ next door yeah. for development. Is there any coding already done here? There is a lot. That's what all the, the, the app in itself is almost fully functional. There's just a couple more things to pull it all together so we can start. So then what is the $25,000? That was because we needed a number to give to you. And his number is a lot lower. But if a professional was going to do it, it'd be $25,000 for him. He's not asking for as much. Well, you should really think about what you're asking us for because your ability to get funded might be, if the lower the number you're asking, might help your chances. And you don't have to give as much equity to us if you don't need it. Yeah. You know, so 